Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster, and I thought I'd do a quick update video um, on one that I did a little while ago, carving with woods that are less than ideal. Um, now if you saw that video, you would have seen this, um, which was a piece of birch which I harvested from a fallen tree that had been down for some time. Um, and really the purpose of that video was to prove or, or to show people that you don't have to have brand new, freshly felled timber. Um, as ideal as that would be, you can make do um, and get away with carving things that a lot of people would maybe walk away from and wouldn't consider using. Um, now this is the piece, we've already got the bowl in, um, and as you can see, especially sort of here, you know, I can I can rub bits of this away just with my thumbnail. Um, it's not rotten per se, it's just a little bit on the soft side. Um, and what I'm gonna do, um, I wanna sort of try and just finish this off ready for sort of um, drying out today. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of the corners off with my saw, um, and then I'm going to do a bit of work with the axe. Um, and I'm not sure if I've mentioned this in other videos or not, but you could use an axe to, to do the entirety of this bowl. You could sort of start from the outside, work your way down. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but what I find is that using something like this, it doesn't matter what type or style of saw you're using, whatever you've got to hand, um, I will actually take off sort of the corners from about here and it just basically removes a lot of material very quickly. It saves you a lot of time, a lot of effort and it's much safer than using an axe sort of really close up. Um, so what I'll do, I'll move the camera closer in so you can see the saw cutting through this. That's, that's what I want to show you is how this differs from sort of fresh wood that you, you would have seen me do in my other videos. Um, so I'll bring the camera a bit closer in and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so hopefully you've got a pretty good view of this. Um, and what I want you to do is just sort of keep an eye on this wood as I'm cutting through, just so that you can sort of see how it behaves um, sort of differently, I suppose, to, to the sort of the green wood that you normally see me cut. So hopefully you can see there it's a lot softer. Um, what I can actually do is if I sort of reverse this, uh, this saw a little bit, just put a little bit of pressure on here. Um, I may be able to, so, you know, you can just snap this off. Um, and that's, that's the risk, that's what you're looking to avoid, is you don't want to get too, put too much force on anywhere that's particularly thin um, or that you could do damage to. I mean, obviously, once I've taken off these four corners, this bowl will be a lot, um, a lot more delicate. Um, it's probably the wrong word for it, because it won't be delicate per se. Uh, but it, there will be a risk of damage more so uh, than when it's in a big block like this. Okay, so that's the first corner off. Um, again, this really nice sporting is coming through the side, which is lovely. Um, rather than bore you with this process, I'm going to take the rest of the corners off and I'll come back and we'll do a little bit of work with the axe. Right then, well there we go. Um, that is pretty much it for the saw. Um, all done, all finished. Um, I've left a reasonable amount of um, stock on here that I could have taken off with the saw, uh, but because this wood is a little bit softer than usual, I wanted to give myself a little bit of a buffer for when I'm using the axe. Um, and now all I'm going to do is just take my axe and just, if you can imagine, so you've got the, the bowl here, just, just in case you want to try and do this yourself. Just try and imagine the line of the bowl along this wood. So what you don't want to do is accidentally go too far and bring your axe through the inside of this wood. Um, so basically you're just trying to smooth this down and get this the outer side in line with the bowl on the inside. Um, and I'm probably looking to leave about quarter to half an inch um, sort of wood for the outside wall of the bowl and as you can see exactly what I've just done here guys and I was hoping something like this would happen um, because this wood is a little bit softer um, and where parts of it are softer than others you will get things like this where this is just going to break off it happens with fresh green wood as well um, but obviously with the extra um, sort of uh, the beginnings of rot in here you just need to be careful about what angles you're cutting at um, in particular, you don't want to sort of start, start hitting or cutting on the top of something here because what you'll be doing is um, almost, almost the same as sort of if you're splitting with a throw and you'll end up splitting off a big swathe of wood. So you want to go about halfway down, start cutting through from that side, then you can flip it over and then you can cut against the opposite edge as well. Um, it won't guarantee 
that something won't go wrong. Um, but what it should do is allow you to carve without too much of a risk of splitting off a large chunk that you don't intend to. Uh, but I'm going to carry on with this for 5-10 for minutes or so and I'll come back when we're a little bit closer to being done. So that's about as far as I'm going to take it with the axe. That is now um, very roughly hewn and is now a lot more bowl shape. Um, and to be honest, if I was going to have this as a, just a general user, I could probably even just leave it like this. Maybe give it a little bit of a sand, certainly give it an oil and a wax treatment, and that would be ready to use. Um, but what I am going to do, because I'm using this as a bit more of a decorative piece, um, I had a friend of mine who said they wanted something to um, put some sort of small items in, sort of loose chains, that kind of thing. Um, I said I'd try and make something up, so this is what I'm doing. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take my knife, um, this is one of my little small Mora carving knives, um, and just tidy this up a little bit. So obviously, you, hopefully, if I put this down for a second, so let me see if I can find a good enough example. Uh, just about here, so hope you see my finger is there. Um, that is very, very punky in there. It's certainly more so than I thought. I mean, some of that's falling away even just as I'm rubbing it with the tip of my finger. Um, and it's a little bit further gone than I anticipated. I didn't realize it was quite that extent. Um, also, again, sort of just here. Again, hopefully you can see Look at that quite close to the camera, quite punky in there. It's only in very small patches. Um, and again, sort of the, the, the purpose of this video really is to show that even though normally you'd look to avoid this kind of thing, it's actually not a huge problem. Um, so all I'm going to do, I won't bore you with, the, with all of this, but I'm just going to uh, tidy this up a little bit um, just to make it a little bit smoother, get some of these tool marks out slightly difficult doing this, keeping everything in the same place with the camera, but I'll, uh, I'll do my best. Um, and then what I'll do, I'll come back once I've tidied it up just a little bit. There'll still be plenty of tool marks in there, um, and it will benefit from a sand if, I'm, if you want to you know, smooth everything down, or you can leave the tool marks in there um, if you want it to be sort of looking a little bit more, uh, a little bit more rustic. Um, and I must admit, I'm always in two minds whether to uh, you know, properly sand everything down and make it all lovely and beautiful and smooth um, or to leave it that kind of, you know, tooled, almost unfinished look. Um, and I think both looks really, really nice. Um, again, with something like this, you can get away with a lot because you've got a lot of detail in, in, this, uh, in the grain and the sporting of this wood, um, which kind of covers a multitude of sins. Um, if you're if you're a little bit like me and you're more of a perfectionist and you, you know I like the uh, the look of a properly sanded finished piece, um, then you know by all means do that. Um, if on the other hand, as I do on occasion, and you feel like being a little bit lazy, um, then certainly a piece of wood like this, um, once it's been given just a very very light sanding, um, just to take away any sort of sharp edges, given an oil, maybe give it a, a wax finish as well. Um, you know, it will look just as nice as something that's sanded, in my opinion. Um, really, just depends on personal preference. Right then, guys. So we are done. Um, this has been tidied up as much as I uh, intend on tidying it up for now. Just smoothed off some of the tool marks off the back, just made it generally a bit more rounded, a bit more uniform. Again, hopefully you can see here, um, you know, it's not completely uniform going all the way around the side, especially sort of something like here where you've got some of these lumps. Um, this is the time in which to remove those if, if that's what you want to do. I mean, sanding will round them down a little bit, obviously, um, but if you want to make everything perfectly uniform, um, I'd suggest if you're making one of these is to do it now while it's... Um, still sort of damp and still easily carvable you know as this dries out it will start to get harder um, you can still carve it it just becomes a lot more difficult and there's a lot more effort involved um, so if you want to save yourself some some pain and some hassle um, finish off all of your sort of fine carving bits on it now it's certainly in terms of getting it uniform 
Um, once it's fully dry, you can then start using things like finishing gouges and sandpaper to get it 100% smooth. Um, but all in all, I'm really pleased with this, guys. Um, now this is going to take sort of several weeks to dry out. We're just moving into November now, um, so the weather is a lot um, colder. There's also a lot more moisture in the air, which will just slow down this drying process. Um, you know, if, you, if you're looking to make um, things like this as maybe Christmas gifts for people, which is something I do, um, you really want to be making them kind of in the spring and the summertime and giving them a nice long time to dry out. Um, generally, I put things, as you, as you know, in a carrier bag just to sort of slow down that drying process so that it doesn't go too quickly and things end up splitting. Um, but that's where this is going. It's now going to go in a carrier bag. I'll probably come back to it once a week or so, give it a little bit of an airing, give it an hour or so outside of the bag to breathe. Um, I'll do a little bit more sort of fine carving on it just as, I, as and when I feel like it. Um, and then that's it guys. So as I've said, you know, I think this looks really nice. Um, I'm not sure about you guys, you know, I like the, uh, the sort of the textured look. I like the sort of the rustic feel of this. Um, and again, this is a piece of wood that provided it doesn't split, um, you know, not that long ago, I would have walked past and not given a second glance. Um, but I've been experimenting with this kind of wood, you know, sort of deadfall that's been there for a little while, not something that's massively fresh. Um, up through through necessity, more, more so from choice to begin with, but now actually I'm picking up things like this thinking, do you know what, it's perfectly serviceable, it will allow me to carve it, I need to rethink how I carve it a little bit, just to make sure, you know, I'm not, um, you know, being too enthusiastic with the axe or the saw, or I'm not cutting quite as close to the lines as maybe I normally would do, just to give myself that little bit of a buffer. Um, but I hope it was useful guys, by all means any comments or questions drop them in the box below, happy to have a discussion if you've got any, any comments or, or questions about this kind of thing. Um, and uh, hit like and subscribe and hope you join me next time. Thanks guys.